Hello, my name is Yim Register. Today I'll be presenting on our paper, Attached to the Algorithm, Making Sense of Algorithmic Precarity on Instagram. So we're gonna be talking about attachment theory, unpredictability of the Instagram algorithm, and how content creators respond to that uncertainty. So before we get ahead of ourselves, I wanna set the tone for this talk. So this is one of those papers that a part of me was like, you wrote about what? And the other part of me really believes in what I'm talking about with you today. Today. So if you already know about attachment theory, you might be thinking, oh man, this is going to be good. And it is good. But don't worry, uh, I'm not going to be delving into your childhood wounds or your love life. Instead, we're going to be talking about the real emotional impact that algorithmic precarity can have on people and maybe a little bit about what to do about it. So who are the players in this talk today? We have the Instagram algorithm, we have attachment theory, and we have content creators discussing on the subreddit r slash Instagram. So for the Instagram algorithm, uh, we're gonna be referring to it like our content creators did, this amorphous algorithm controlling a variety of experiences. So visibility, order of posts, recommended content, and content moderation. So sometimes we saw a distinction between these different experiences, but overwhelmingly, any of these was called the algorithm. Amazing prior work has looked into how people deal with algorithmic uncertainty, the precarity of online creative labor, and people's reactions to algorithmic changes. You can read more about all that in the paper. <laughs> For now, what you need to know is the algorithms are always subject to change and prioritizing different things for visibility. Uh, that can feel very non-transparent and anxiety inducing to try to keep up with an unpredictable algorithm that dictates your success as a creator. So how about attachment theory? We need background in that before we keep going. So original attachment theory refers to the bond between a parent and a child, but has been extended to how we show up in adult relationships. Basically, when a child's emotional and physical needs are met in a predictable and safe manner, they tend to develop secure attachment and they're able to relate to others with a healthy balance of autonomy and reliance on community. When a child's needs are not met or met sporadically, this leads to different manifestations of insecure attachment. This is a dysregulation of the nervous system. Uh, it's a very distressing experience characterized by hypervigilance, difficulty regulating emotions, and feelings of distrust and lack of safety when relating to others. I'm going to quickly outline the four major attachment styles, but hopefully this won't feel too much like a BuzzFeed quiz. So if you have anxious attachment, uh, there's a lot of fear of abandonment uh, or being left behind. So anxious people will mold themselves to fit what they think others want and try to get ahead of any punishment they might receive. There's a higher reliance on external validation and difficulty with emotional regulation. If you have avoidant attachment, there is a lot of hyper-independence. They've learned their needs won't be met and their needs don't matter and they have a general distrust of others even when they do want to connect. For the disorganized of us, well, I'm really saying that with posterity, it's a back and forth mix of anxious and avoidant behaviors uh, with the least emotional regulation. So there's this desire to connect, but lots of volatility and hypervigilance, sometimes characterized by, I love you, go away. Finally, there's the secure type, which is the majority of adults. So needs were consistently met enough in a stable enough environment. And these individuals are able to handle conflict better, balance a healthy sense of self while also relying on others. They're more easily able to cope with uncertainty due to a more regulated nervous system. So I'm gonna boil it down to a very, very simple version here. Uh, there's some kind of authority or caregiver. Hopefully we don't think of our parents or partners as judges, but okay, some kind of authority. Uh, and they're in charge of doling out these punishments and rewards for behavior. Again, human relationships are much kinder and genuine and complex than this, but this is the simple model and maybe you get what I'm getting at already. So they're this arbiter of punishment and reward and that happens either in a consistent or unpredictable way. There are so many more caveats, you guessed it, in the paper. Uh, so keep in mind, this is a super simple version. So what am I getting at? Well, we looked at the Instagram algorithm like this. So drawing from prior work on platform paternalism, 
thinking of it like this authority that doles out punishments and rewards. So punishments like lack of visibility or content moderation and rewards like engagement and connection. But the rules aren't transparent. It may not even be possible for them to be fully transparent um, by the nature of evolving trends and machine learning algorithms. But people overwhelmingly feel like the algorithm can't be solved or understood and that it is always, always changing. This study analyzed data from the subreddit r slash Instagram, so partially as a data access issue for Instagram itself, and partially because this subreddit is a directed place that people come together to sense make collectively about the Instagram algorithm. This subreddit has been used in prior work to look at how people discuss shadow banning, algorithmic folk theories, and their anxieties. So we conducted thematic analysis on just over a thousand posts and comments uh, with two coders. We initially noticed so much hypervigilance and emotional charge, which led to the development of these attachment themes that you're about to see. So overwhelmingly, users described their relationship to the algorithm as adversarial, something they needed to battle and beat and something causing real harm. So we have an entire section in the paper that outlines the types of punishments people are experiencing and their strategies to counteract them. As we kept reading, we started to see the main driver of such anxiety was this uncertainty, this roulette-like behavior of algorithmic decisions. This user says it best, and sorry for swearing in a professional talk now, sometimes it will promote your content and most times it will tell you to F off and you're worthless unless you pay for ads. So we looked into it and saw that people are exhibiting insecure attachment to the Instagram algorithm. Keep in mind, we are not diagnosing people from some Reddit comments. Um, instead, we are demonstrating some real emotional impacts of algorithmic uncertainty with a hope to inspire more empathy and compassion for stakeholders of algorithmic systems. So following Chen et al's trauma-informed computing, we're simply contributing more evidence of how these systems can impact people's emotional realities, potentially triggering unhelpful and painful dynamics. So yes, I'm saying that Instagram acts like your mom, and I'm also saying it's affecting real lives. So a variety of people exhibited anxious behavior when describing their experiences with the algorithm. So they were panicking and trying a bunch of strategies to get engagement or avoid a ban. They wanted to get ahead of punishment and kept asking for advice on how they should be in order to be liked. For avoidant attachment, it was characterized by a kind of hopeless resolution to ditch the platform. Obviously, anyone should stop using social media if they want to, uh, but these were characterized by a kind of giving up feel or resisting the algorithmic control and kind of like a it's not worth it dejection. Disorganized attachment was characterized by the most anger at Instagram mixed with still trying strategies to overcome the issues. So remember that all of these insecure types are characterized by an activated nervous system and distress, something we provide a model for in the paper. We finally get to my favorite part of this paper, which is the minority of users who exhibited secure attachment to the ever-changing algorithm. People wished each other the best, told them to stay genuine and just keep going. They acknowledged fluctuations in Instagram, but said it was most important to stay true to one's art and happiness. They encouraged people not to follow too many beauty influencers or things that made them feel bad. One person said, the Instagram algorithm is really messed up. And even though your art is great, not many people may be able to see it. Just don't feel so pressured about this. Social media is a great tool for knowing future clients and building a community, but never forget about your art and do what makes you happy. Wink heart. <laughs> so reading the secure attachment quotes always warmed my heart and I'm excited to share them with you. The paper draws from these as well as literature on earned secure attachment to envision what fostering secure attachment to social media might look like. So I look forward to your ideas, your designs, your thoughts, all that center the emotional well-being of users and their experiences and identities. As we know at Kai, we make real impact with our design decisions, and there are often unintended consequences. So I hope we move forward towards social media experiences that prioritize user well-being as much as possible. 
and we together are part of the solution. Thank you.